everyone. We are live from the butcher. We are here at the Clarion Locker in in Clarion, Iowa, which is in Wright County, North Central Iowa, and we're here with locker owners Monty and Elmarie Nell. They have owned the Clarion Locker since 2009, and before that, they were the owners of a locker in Ventura, Iowa. So we're here to talk about their plant, to take a tour. We're going to talk to them about recent expansion, um, kind of changes with the pandemic, and their future plans. So really quick, I just want to introduce the staff, the PFI staff that's here. I'm Megan Filbert. I'm joined by Jason, Emma, and Brennan here with me. And back at our headquarters in Ames is Maggie Norton and Megan Sweeney. Also, to all of you viewing out there in YouTube land, please use the chat function, introduce yourself in the chat, and also ask your questions through the chat. I'm going to be watching it on my phone so I can relay those questions to Elmarie and Moni. The other thing is, if you're having trouble using the chat, please, please um, log in to YouTube via your Google account or create a YouTube channel, and then that should be allow you to access the chat. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Moni and Elmarie to tell us a little bit of their background and then take us on a tour. So, I'm Elmarie, this is my husband, Moni. Uh, we've been in the locker industry for about 15, 16 years. Uh, in South Africa, we did some slaughter on farms. So, we came over to the U.S. in 2000. Ever since then, we've worked to improve ourselves and we're very happy at what we're doing right now. It is hard work, but we are very passionate about what we do. We love what we do, and we enjoy it very much that we can provide this service to our customers here in Iowa. Right. I'm Monty Nell, and like I said, my, my wife and I, we've been running the uh, Clarion Locker since 2009. Um, I did uh, run the Ventura Locker. That was a Ventura there for a while. and. Um, Today we're going to give you a, a, a tour of our plant and uh, kind of just show you um, how things work here at the locker and um, some of the expansion that we've done due to the um, you know the COVID-19 crisis that we've experienced around the world and, and, and right here at home. And so the demand for expansion has uh, you know been happening in, in every locker plant almost in the, in the whole country. And so we, you know, followed suit, and, and we're going to show you that today. So. Yes, a lot of people don't know what a locker plan does, or actually how it works, or when people think locker, they kind of cringe, think bloody, but um, we keep things clean, we keep things tidy, and we keep things professional here. So we're proud to show you what it is. If you have questions, even if you think they're dumb, please don't be afraid to ask, because a lot of people are not educated, and they don't know the different cuts. They don't know what they're getting when they come to a locker. They don't know where their meat comes from. They don't know how we do it. So if you're not sure, today is the day that you can ask us anything, and we can answer those questions, and you can feel comfortable in doing so. So this is a great opportunity for us as the processor to educate you as our consumer. OK. OK, so, so we can show, show you, I'll start the process. The next room is going to get a little bit noisy, uh, but uh, we're actually standing in our uh, retail area. and our. Uh, into the building, you walk um, into a small expansion um, part which connects uh, our two buildings, and, and I will come to that, but you're, you're basically standing in the processing area where you can buy uh, You can retail. walk in from the street, yeah, from and the street, you can yeah. come and purchase products that we offer for sale. So a few items to mention is we have patties and brats, ribeye steaks, jerky, snack sticks, bacon so we offer a wide variety of different items for everyone that can come purchase it so if you're not ready to purchase a whole carcass which that is the real way to save money you can always come in try our products and from there make a decision on what works best for you and your family and it's both frozen and fresh yes so. we are frozen and fresh okay we're going to go into our processing room So this is our processing room. This is where we we get we cut up our, all of our custom and 
um, estate inspected uh, beef, hogs, and lambs. Um, we also uh, we recently purchased uh, some equipment to make our uh, processing a little more efficient. Um, if, you, if you look to your left, um, it's a, this is our new packaging machine that we've recently purchased this last year. We used to uh, paper wrap and pl uh, with plastic and paper all of our products. And uh, since then, we've upgraded to what we call a, it's called a roll stock machine. So it's a basically an automated packager. And uh, right now, they're packaging some retail patties. So, so this is top of the line packaging that you can get. It takes out all the air, all the oxygen, sucks it out of this machine. So freezer burn does not occur. Um, this is a very sturdy plastic, so it's not going to break. So when you're in there and you're scurrying around in the freezer, usually regular vacuum bags would pop. Or if you have a cryovac machine or cellophane, those don't last as long. This here in the freezer is the best that we can get. Um, the machine is top of the line, and we're very, very happy that we can offer our customers this. We're actually one of the only lockers in the state of Iowa that does whole carcass beef through this machine. And if you do a custom beef, custom hog, you're going to get your meat package in this cryovac. You're going to get this, how you can tear it easy open, and you're getting quality. And that is something that we're very happy to offer to our customers. Albert, did, were you able to purchase this machine as a result of any sort of pandemic relief funds? Yes. Um, we were able to, we are still going through different funding opportunities. With our pandem pandemic relief funds, we actually bought a different machine, a polyclip machine. We actually purchased this on our own, but we hope in the future that we can get some assistance for this machine. These are very expensive. Um, but this is what we needed to do for us to move forward and create further customers. So a lot of our third party customers that want to process with us, they go to farmers markets, grocery stores, restaurants. Um, they want something that really sticks out. Like this is my product, this is what I'm selling and I feel with this machine we can do different colors. Um, we have the black on here, we can do the clear on clear, we can do red. There's different colors to choose from, but we feel our logo and our statement is black and white. That's what we go for. We don't like the bright colors because we feel the meat and the quality should sell itself, not the packaging. So over here we have um, our boners and saw operator, and he's busy breaking down a uh, carcass. Do you want to go into that, Monty? Yep, so uh, basically um, on the fabricating table, we, we, use, we have a cut sheet from each customer that um, sp uh, specifies exactly how they want their, uh, cut, their animal processed. And so we'll go through a cut sheet um, and basically give them exactly the cuts they want and, and uh, you know, in the amounts they want. And so that's what they're doing now. They're basically boning out uh, the cuts that aren't wanted into for burger or, or you know hamburger or, or um, patties and such. And then all the uh, the mus muscles are are put in a red lager for packaging later on. So so we'll move on now to the uh, to our the next room, uh, which um, and and I can explain a little bit more when we get there. So. So this is where we, we're in our uh, our grinding and stuffing room. So in this room, yeah, we uh, will grind all the burger, uh, and we have a two-stage grinding system that we that we like. Um, once the, 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 the and, and right now they're grinding hamburger, and so once the hamburger is is brown, then it moves on to this machine over here, and this is called a vacuum stuffer. Um, so. Last year with the epidemic, with the, the state funds that were provided to us for, uh, you know, to assist us in, in, in ramping up our production, uh, we purchased a, a machine, it's called a polyclip, and basically what it is, it's an automated hamburger stuffer. And so, essentially, 
you know, we've had this, the vacuum stuff for, for several years now, but we, we, we never had the, uh, we would always hand stuff every single pound of hamburger. So it took, it took a lot of time. I mean, it would take somebody about a, a full eight hour day behind this machine to stuff every pound of hamburger by hand, okay? So last year with the epidemic, we were able to purchase um, an automated hamburger stuffer uh, from Polyclip. And essentially, this machine is actually built to be attached to the stuffer. And what it does is once you've put the hamburger in the stuffer, and uh, they, the two are, computed, uh, are linked with a computer, and uh, you basically hit the start button, and this machine does the rest of the work for you. And what it does is uh, there's a long sleeve of hamburger material on this machine, and it'll, it'll proceed to go through it, put a clip on both ends, fill it to exactly a pound, and then clip it and cut it and spit out the finished product on the other end. And the nice thing about this machine is that it eliminates 99% of the air in the bag. So before, depending on who stuffed hamburger, you might have a little bit of um, an air pocket in, in, the, in the bag, which might you know, shorten the lifespan of your, of your burger. And now we've switched to the clips where they're tight and there's no air and it's nice and plump. And so it's going to last longer and look better in your freezer. It's also a better portion control. So it measures out exactly a pound. So therefore, if you get charged per pound for your ground beef, you're exactly getting that poundage. And there's no way. So as I said, better quality, better effective cost. This machine has been a blessing to us as small processors. It doesn't just do ground beef. It also does our snack sticks. We make ring bologna, yep. summer, summer sausage. sausage. I mean, basically, the time that this machine has saved us, you know, we take one employee, like I said, for eight, hour, eight hours of a day, we can do the same amount of work in about an hour and a half. So now you can take the rest of that time and utilize that employee's time on, on something else in the plant to, uh, you know, increase productivity. So, uh, so one of our expansion projects that we want to show you is going to be over here. Um, we increased our freezer space. Want to open the door? Yep, yep. Um, by 50%, our bottleneck was our freezer, and oh, we, du we doubled our freezer. We doubled yep, yep. our our freezer space. Yep. So we're yeah, yeah. So we basically doubled our freezer space. Um, Initially, this room and part of the room next door used to house our, our seasonings, had our little office in it, our break room, and our dry storage. And um, later on, you'll see and wonder how everything in the, in the expansion fit, fit in this room. <laughs> but anyway, so we doubled our freezer capacity. Right next door, the big door, is, uh, is where our existing freezer is. And so we're actually, we haven't quite finished it. We're just working on the refrigeration system. It's a brand new refrigeration system. And uh, we're just uh, waiting for electrician. Like everybody, they're all, they're all backlogged and they can't quite get to us. And so we're waiting for the, uh, to, for the electrician to free up. It's got some time so you can finish up the, uh, the wiring so we could get this up and running, which should be within the next couple of weeks. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to share a comment and a question from the chat. So someone from Kenosha, Wisconsin comments, we need a locker like Clarion Locker over here. Quality products with exceptional customer service. How can you beat that? I think a lot of people are feeling that all across the US. And someone asks, how many animals have come through your facility year to date? So this year. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> that would be a good question for Elmery I, on the numbers. I, you can break I it down by me. Um, right now, what we usually do is we do an average of about 15 beef to 10 to 15 hogs. It just really depends on the need. Per week. Yes, per week. So some weeks we can do 20 hogs. Some weeks we do 10. It just depends on what the farmer's schedule. With our expansion that we have done, we actually have been fully booked for the year back in May. 
but with our expansion, we actually have opened up slaughter spots for people. So one of the things that me and Moni hate to do is we cannot help people and we have to send our customers somewhere else. And we understand they have, you know, that animal, they've raised it, they want to get it processed here. So with the expansion, we can get our customers back in, get them those spots. And once you establish a good relationship with your locker, you want to continue going there because some, somebody might like the sausage we make or the bacon or the smoked flavor that we do. So we're happy that we can keep those customers and we can add space for slaughter for them. And with our freezer addition that Moni just showed you, that was our bottleneck. Our freezer would get full, we would be overwhelmed, we needed people to come pick up their meat, and now that we're adding space, it'll take some stress off of us and our customers, and we can do more processing and more animals. So our record slaughter for hogs is one week, we did 100 pigs. And that was our record. I, I think that was amazing. And Moni actually was present for every hog that, that was butchered that week. Oh, Marie, for the farmers that are watching, how far in advance do they need to call you to book? Like, what can they expect with that process? I would recommend any farmer, if they want to get in July, August, September, October, November, December, you have to pre-schedule that a year in advance because there's only so many slots and we're getting really busy. And with us, you know, we've, we've been here since 2009. We had to build our business. And in the beginning, people could just walk in and say, I need 8B for December. And they would book that in October. Right now, we're booked up. If it wasn't for our expansion, we would have to let them come in next year. So as soon as you know that your livestock is ready or you have a rough idea, call me, discuss it, let's pencil it in. So at least that way we have you in the book because we have some farmers who during COVID when we got booked up in May would call in August and say, well, I've done you know, 28 beef with you. I need to get these 28 beef in now. And then you know, I have a lot going on and I, I don't want to miss somebody or, or let them feel left out, but jot it in your calendar and just put a memo and just call us pencil it in if you're not sure. And we always try and work with our customers as best we can, but sometimes we're only human, so we can only do so much. Do you have to pay, do farmers have to pay a deposit? No, we are not there yet. Um, what we do ask is, I usually send out a reminder text on Mondays and say, hey, please make sure that you're here because we have drop off Tuesdays between one and four in the afternoon, which is convenient, or you can bring it in Wednesday morning because we slaughter on Wednesdays. Um, you can bring in Wednesday mornings between 7 and 8. So on that text I say, if you cannot make it, just give me a courtesy call or shoot me a text back and say something happened, I can't make that, I need to reschedule. So that way, one, it helps the scheduling because I'm paying my butchers to be there. And it helps me work out my production for the week because if I, if I have a beef don't show up, I'm losing money. And then I can get somebody else in who's been waiting and really needs to. So it's a courtesy, courtesy thing. We've been really blessed with our farmers. They've been really good in communicating. If they cannot make their spot, they would fill it with somebody else, another farmer that's been looking. Um, but I know there's some other lockers that have been asking for the deposit. We're not quite there yet. And I just feel that's more paperwork for me. And as it is, I do you know, enough paperwork. So I just ask that they just use courtesy and, and etiquette and just let us know what's going on. What percentage of your business is pork versus beef? And then add sheep and goats in there. Oh, goodness. I want to say it depends on the season. So hogs are not year round and beef is not year round. So usually it's 50-50. I probably do, Money. what did you say in lamb? We probably do maybe 5% lamb and goat. Yeah, goes. maybe 5% It's not lamb and... big. We do have those customers, but um, there's a lot of lockers who don't do that anymore. We still do that. Um, we don't do any poultry. We do bison, but that is a farm slaughter. Um, we've done some wild game that was butchered somewhere else and they would bring it in. We do process venison, but we do take that boned out only. And then we do participate in the hush program, and that's a whole carcass that's field dressed. Okay, are you guys ready to move on? <laughs> So Moni explained the poly clip. We have the grinders. Where do you want to go next, Moni? Um, the cooler? We can, okay, so we can, this is our cook cooler. Okay. So, so basically, um, um, we separate all of our, our uh, 
our cooked products and our raw products are separated. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a separate cooler where anything that's cooked and ready to eat gets put into this cooler. So for, bacon, yep. ham, we've already worked that for the week, so right. that's why it's empty, but yeah. usually we do a rotation and everything that's cooked goes in there so we keep it separate. This here is Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. <laughs> this is our fresh cooler. Carcass cooler. You want to yeah. go in there? So this is where all the raw meat and the hanging carcasses are. Uh, if we go in, yeah, we've got some beef hanging. Um, we don't have any hogs or lambs. Tomorrow, so for example, tomorrow we're slaughtering 15 Sorry. beef, 10 hogs, and two lambs. And so this cooler will fall right up again tomorrow at slaughter day. So we're actually caught up. Like yeah. we felt like we were so behind for such a long time that we were playing catch up, catch up. And finally, in June, we got caught up. And we're thankful for our staff because they've been amazing helping us get caught up. And it's a relief that we can rely on them to do that and that we have somebody who can run the saw if Moni has to do other things. And I have a, an employee that can take over the phone and the cutting cords and help me. So that way we can go, we kind of float. So where we are needed is where we jump in. So we don't sit in the office all day. We don't have time for that. We should probably take some office time, but we enjoy more being on the floor, being active in our plant. And we're here every day, I want to say, maybe 98%. So we, yeah, so we have one of the, the, the nice thing about this facility, if you can look around, it's a huge walk-in cooler. And it's actually one of the biggest walk-in coolers for a small meat processing plant like ourselves. And we're, we're I've been told, that at one time, they put 60 head of beef in this cooler. I've never put that many in it. I, I, I mean, I'm sure the whole, you know, the, the frame itself that holds the carcasses up could handle it, but I, I've never filled it up that much. That's, that's a I know, I really feel like our week. cooler is empty today because we've been cutting, cutting, cutting. But how, how long do carcasses hang? So our, our lambs and our beef, we hang for two weeks. So 14 days. Now our hogs will hang anywhere from from three to five days uh, before we process them. And the reason for that is that uh, red meat needs to age, you know, to develop flavor and, and tenderness. And, and uh, pork, which is considered a white meat, it, it, it's you know, which is in the family of like a chicken, you know, a white meat, um, it doesn't need to age. It, it actually decomposes different than beef does, uh, red meat. So. Are these grass-fed carcasses? They look a little different. Yep. So. Variety of uh, of customers, um, and and then you will see you will see that there's just by visually you can see different quality of of, of uh, carcasses in fat color and in marbling, um, and the reason for it is is that we have such a variety of customers. You know we have we have customers that raise just corn beef, uh, corn sorry corn fed beef, um, as well as certain breeds of beef. Okay. Uh, Carcasses vary in, in the different breeds. Um, Grass-fed beef, or, or you know, they, they, they tend to be a little bit on the leaner side. They, they, they're not as uh, they won't be as fatty as, as like for example, a corn-fed beef. And so, on any given week, we'll have a, a mixture of carcasses, from corn-fed to grass-fed to Holsteins, Herefords, Angus, uh, Jerseys. It, you know, it just it, it, it varies. labeling so if you want to sell your meat in your store or on farmers markets or two restaurants and grocery stores you can get your own label made with your logo with your information on there because we're state inspected um, and so that gives customers a really great opportunity and then with our new packaging it looks just smart and I feel like working with our third parties listening to what they say that is it. Sometimes it can be challenging, but it is a lot of fun to do that and give them, when they come and pick up their meat, um, they get excited and they're like, wow, this looks good. So with, with the expansion, part of the expansion was, if you look behind you, we added a, a, onto our existing cooler. There used to be a wall right here, and that was the end of this cooler. And so everything, 
as you see on that side, used to have to fit in this area. And so by expanding the cooler, we've made more room for more carcasses. So we can hang more and for longer. So. And when the county fairs start in July, we, we sometimes, there's no breathing room. I mean, we live, eat, and sleep at the locker, and this cooler will be full to the rim. And sometimes when people call Bonnie's like, I don't have space even for a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to the next room? Yep. smoke room and our uh, our packaging room so bacon slicing yeah. we have our bacon slicer our smoker we have a vacuum machine so if we're doing raw product and say we have cooked product to package this is where we will do it so we have two separate areas it's divided right now Samuel is packaging our uh, brats um, He's yep. putting those on trays, and we, what we do is we freeze them a little bit so they get a little stiff, and then we can run them through the machine so they don't explode or go flat. Um, during deer season, our smoker runs 24-7. <laughs> um, that is one thing that we do hope to upgrade down yep. the road. In the future, we would like to uh, double, double, if not triple, our smoke capacity. So we're, uh, but that's something to work for in the future. Yeah. So if we go through this way, You'll have to explain this part. So, <laughs> so we've got a small little workshop area um, for our, our maintenance um, fella. He, um, this is his mess over here. But <laughs> in, next to what we're work, walking into here is this. This is the slaughter room. Uh, this is where all the harvesting gets taken place. Um, so uh, once a week and sometimes twice a week, depending on how busy we are or with uh, state inspected uh, slaughter, um, we will have an inspector in this room with us while we are harvesting uh, uh, different species, you know, from uh, beef, hogs, lambs, uh, or goats. Um, and so, what's the name? You can see there's our, our knock pen, and basically, um, the animal will come in from, um, we have holding pens within the building, and they will be uh, moved from the holding pens into the knock pen, uh, euthanized, um, and then we put them basically on, on the cradle, and we um, you know, start the, the skinning and, and, uh, and uh, cleaning process of the, of the carcass. And so. it's really important to start here and be clean. Make sure you're cutting your animal the right way. This is an art form. This is not something that everybody can just do. Um, sometimes we have people that will do their own butchering and then they'll come back to us and say, that's too much work, we'll just let you guys do it. Because you have to know what you're doing. This is a very dangerous um, thing that you do, you know, as a living and you're working with live carcasses, heavy machinery, sharp machinery, and if you're not paying attention and know what you do, you can get hurt. So a big part of what we do is is training our employees and it's very hard to find butchers in the area um, that can do that or walk in so I want to say 70% of people that come in have never really even know how to sharpen their own knife and we have to train them from start to finish. It takes a lot of time and it costs a lot of money but once we get that employee with the right attitude and willingness, it's easy to shape and form but, them. I mean, the quality of the meat really, truly starts right here. Yes. I mean, it's all about uh, humane handling, how the animal is treated, is the animal comfortable, is he calm, uh, which is very important in, in, in determining the quality of that protein. Uh, you know, if you start changing, if the animal is upset or, or um, you know, he, he's showing signs of being too nervous, it'll re it will affect the meat. So you want the animal as calm as possible and then um, harvested in the most humane form possible and then cleanliness. It has to be done in a, 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 a as clean as possible way. If that, if that meat has been, uh, if, the, if the hide and the, and the hooves and, and that is separated from the, the meat correctly, you're, you're preventing contamination. And contamination is where it will start affecting the quality of your meat. So. Lonnie, speaking of animal welfare, we did get another question about on-farm slaughter. You said you do it with bison. 
what are your future plans for on-farm slaughter with other species? So we, you know, we're we're, we're talking to our um, state uh, veterinary inspector and um, and our and our regular inspector, and we are hoping to get it on the roll where we can go to anybody's farm and harvest uh, um, whichever species they need for harvesting on their farm uh, for a a custom. Now this is custom, not state yeah, inspected, right. because as as of right now. I don't believe there's a state inspected um, beef slaughter facility available in the state of Iowa. There are other states I believe that have them, but nobody, and that might be something for the future. If it goes well, we might offer that. Uh, and again, we'd have to work with the state on that. Um, there are some rules and regulations as far as uh, on, you know, a mobile slaughter, and, and we're working through those. Um, but that is our plan, is In to be able to offer plans, that. We yep. definitely want to offer that. There's not too many people that do it. Right. And um, mm -hmm. I think it will be very beneficial. Not everybody has a stock trailer, you know, right. or not everybody has time to, to be able to take their animals to the, to the, to the meat locker. And so mm -hmm. for us to be able to uh, pack up our gear and actually come to your site, your farm, your acreage, and actually process the carcass, um, uh, butcher it on farm and then bring the carcass back and have it processed in our facility would be I think a very beneficial. And many of our PFI farmer members consider that the gold standard of animal welfare and would love to be able to tap into that service in Iowa exactly. so we yep. hope to see more of it. Yep. Great. Yep, definitely. Good. I, I do have a couple more questions for you. Okay. Um, so this was back to the carcass hanging. Do you hang grass-fed and grain-fed beef for different amounts of time, or it's two weeks across the So board? it's actually our, our hanging times, believe it or not, is up to who, the farmer. or, okay. the, or the, we, We've hung beef for 30 days. Okay. Okay. And it's well, however long you want to hang the carcass is how long we hang it. Some people don't want it hung for two weeks. Some people want it hung from seven to 10 days, okay. and then they want it processed. We can do that. Um, uh, there's, a, some, there's, a, there's a particular farmer every year, he'll bring me six beef, and they are um, corn-fed black Angus, and they, they're usually dressed around 1,100 pounds, and he wants them all hung for 30 days, and we do that for them. Okay. So. It just brings out the flavor a little bit more, but yeah. our schedule for cut-up, so if you don't specify, our, our, our beef schedule is two weeks, so it's just a schedule that we sure. do with our employees that we know in two weeks. Okay, we need to get the cutting cards and then we need to cut the beef up. So it gives us time to, to schedule and to give people also a better estimate of when they can pick up their meats if they're traveling, if they're not in town or close by. And would you charge extra for hanging days above two weeks? No. No, no, we don't. Okay. No. It's okay. a courtesy that we do. Yeah, most um, people most people want you know two weeks. That's the, yeah. the general stand the, yeah. the, the industry standard, yeah. I guess, would be uh, ten to fourteen days. Um, but there are you know people who want to develop certain flavors. You're not going to get any you, the, the 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 quality of the meat. The, um, after 14 days, I believe it's actually seven days, uh, seven to ten days, you will not get, uh, the meat will not get any tenderer, okay? okay? Uh, the tenderizing process, I think, quits at seven okay. days, if I'm not, I might be mistaken on that, but it's, it's, it's not a very long period. Um, the only thing you're really going to gain after that is uh, flavor development. You're going to get a strong beef flavor, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the other thing to consider, though, and a lot of people don't take this into consideration, the longer you hang a carcass, the, the, your, your gains are going to go down. Mm -hmm. So um, you're basically, you know, you're, you're sucking more and more moisture out of that carcass, which means your weight's going to come down. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the studies will show, you know, depending on the breed, that you, you have about a 61% uh, harvest um, from a carcass. Um, now, if you hang that carcass longer, it, it's going to drop significantly. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get those percentages. That is something to be concerned, uh, you know, to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. So a couple so. more questions while we're in this quiet spot. Um, how much extra work is custom labeling? Custom labeling, third party labeling. Third party labeling is a lot extra work because one is I have to work with the customer on how they want their label done. And sometimes that is back and forth emailing or we like to sit and visit and then we have to design. If they have a logo, that's great. We can upload that. And then we, we work on how they want their label. Um, if it's just a simple label and upload, it's not so bad. I can do that within two weeks and put it in my program. But the hardest part is if they want to have their own recipes. 
if they want to have specialized recipes. So say they want a sausage, but they want to make something that I don't have. They don't want to use my sausage seasoning. Every recipe that I do officially has to be sent through the state and approved. So it's quite a process. Um, we do sometimes wait on labels and that can be a hard struggle if they want to bring in the animal and we have, you know, a couple of months but the label is taking a little longer and it depends on what goes in the label, what are, if there's any restrictions and if they want to put anything like there's a lot of regulate, regulatory on labels, you cannot just put anything you want. It has to be approved through the state there's, and I have a label package that I was given, and so usually when I have a new customer, I will give them a copy of the label package and explains to them what we can do, what we cannot do. So you can't put on your package Black Angus if you don't have the certification papers that goes with that. And if you, sh if you say corn fed, you have to go through all that and, and show you know that you're not feeding it anything else. So there's so many regulations, but if you just do a basic label, nothing too extravagant, it, it's pretty easy. And a lot of people like to do that. It does cost a little more to do official as well. Um, the reason for that is we have to do testing through our lab. So when we are in here and our inspectors, they do go through, um, you want to go into the testing part well, of I it? Mean, you know, so every, all the carcasses, you know, um, we, we go through uh, vigorous testing to make sure that we have a cl uh, clean facility, mm -hmm. uh, the product's clean and it's safe to eat. Uh, you know, e everywhere from listeria testing, E. coli testing, um, um, generic E. coli, uh, you know, the 0157H7 mm -hmm. uh, on beef. Uh, so we, we, but we do testing on, on, on a lot of carcasses and, and products as, as well as the state. So the state does their set of tests on, on, on product that comes through, mm -hmm. that flows through this uh, facility, as, and then we also have to do our own testing. So it's almost like a double check on everything, and which is good because then you know you're, you're, you've got a safe product mm -hmm. and, it's, uh, and it's safe for the consumer. So. Exactly. Now, for us to be an official plant, we have to have our HACCP plan. So we became official in 2013. We were a custom plant, and that's how we started. And then we had some demand for growing and third parties that wanted, you know, we had restaurants and grocery stores and that kind of thing that wanted information. So we had a builder has a plan, and then we also have files on all our procedures, SOPs, and so forth. So everything we do is on paper <laughs> in files, and that allows us to be a state inspected plant. And we're proud of what we do. And so for our future plans, we, you know, we have our third party base growing and we're thinking right now as a state inspected plant, there's a lot of need for processing. So we can either decide if we want to up it and go federal or if we want to go with the interstate shipment program, which is CIS. So Right now, that's kind of where we are, and I, I believe we're leaning more towards the CIS program. Yep, we're, yeah. um, we're seeing some interest from our customers right now, um, so we're in the process of going through all that. Yep, we're in the beginning stages. We, with, the, with the epidemic, there, there was, when the CIS program was introduced to the state of Iowa, there were several plants that, uh, in the state that showed interest. In, in, in moving forth to a, uh, interstate commerce. And so we were one of those plants. Now with the epidemic, things have slowed down for mo about 90% of the plants that wanted to get into this program. They've put it on the back burner um, because of this epidemic and the, the mass influx of, of processing and butchering that, we, that they've had to do. But uh, now that things are starting to slowly come back to normal, you'll see, I think, uh, not only us, but other plants are going to go back uh, to pursuing the CIS program. And um, it, I think it'll be greatly beneficial, not only for, for us, but for, you know, for the farmers of Iowa, that they could take their product that they're uh, processing and, and, and growing in Iowa, and they can move it outside of our borders. It'll give them so much more other opportunities. States, so, so we only have six minutes left, so okay. let's go ahead to okay. the expansion. And so, Moni, while we're walking, could you talk about, we had a question, what is the startup cost for a facility like this? In all reality, um, people really don't realize how much it costs. Yeah. But if you had to build a brand new plan today, and I'm yeah. not going to lie to you, yeah. it's going to cost you about 1.2 million. Yep. Uh, that is going to be basic equipment and the building that's uh, built to standards yep. of uh, the state, state, state inspection or federal yep. uh, inspection. Okay. And so um, 
Yeah, the, the startup costs are enormous. Um, I think people don't realize the price of, uh, of the equipment that's being used. Um, Okay. It's, okay. Uh, okay. We, we've had two, two lockers that I know of being built in the state of Iowa in, in the last, uh, I say, 10 years. And um, sure they were both uh, well over a million dollars a piece. Um, and, that, and like I said, that's, that's, that's not, uh, that's not having any uh, vacuum stuffers or you know, this kind of packaging material. You're, you're still paper wrapping with plastic. So um, refrigeration, just the refrigeration alone, is uh, an enormous amount uh, of expense. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously you're followed by the equipment, depending on how, how advanced uh, you want to go with yeah. the, the, the packaging and, and cutting and so forth. I mean, a lot of guys start off, they buy used equipment, but even that, they don't give it away, you know. Can I turn this so, off? Yeah, well, let's turn that off there quick, yeah. Put a little button in the back here. <laughs> so with the expansion, like I said, the our freezer, doubling our freezer space and adding on to our cooler, um, all that product that was in that, those two rooms needed to go somewhere. So we were landlocked where we are, and so we were able to uh, purchase the building next to us, mm -hmm. um, part of the building next to us, so a, a portion, 3,000 square foot of the building next to us. And so everything that you see in this room used to fit into those two rooms. How? I don't know. <laughs> we don't know, but, but we're very happy that we have this space. It's made life a lot easier. We can buy in bulk, which saves us money and saves yep. our farmers money in the long run as well. Um, with COVID, a lot of our, our dry products and paper, the prices have gone through the roof. So things are increasing, meat's getting more expensive, processing prices have to go up, but we all have to adjust so we can all survive. So yeah, so basically, I mean, we're actually talking uh, with the, 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 the owner of the property next door. Uh, once we got everything in here, we realized that we still didn't have enough space. And so we're actually working towards purchasing the next 5,000 square foot next to us. Yes. Okay, so. a couple more questions that came through. How, when you do get mobile solder up and going, how, what's your radius? Like how far are you willing to travel? I think we don't want to go more than 45 miles we talked That's about to start off with just um, to start it off with to see how it goes staffing I mean, is the biggest issue i mean right. one we're, we have to send our employees sometimes we would need them here so depending on when they get there if it's an hour drive you're looking at an hour slaughter an hour back that's three hours that we're taking away from the plant so what if we have the staffing capacity that is something in the future that would be a possibility but we really have to watch our mileage because it'll also add cost how far out you are for us to travel so if it's too far and it's not feasible for us then we have to say no mm -hmm. um, and that's something you know we Hope even not. talked about maybe down the road if we can't you know get the, the the mobile unit slaughter up and going maybe we can have a mobile trailer unit where we can actually do the hauling pick the the animals up on the farm and then bring them here so we're trying to look at you know making convenience for our farmers, things that we need to do as a locker to grow and what the future holds for us because there's a lot of possibilities and we have to adapt to them to survive. One more question, are CIS sales limited to any states or is it nationwide? I believe it's nationwide. nationwide. So it cannot be out of country, right. but only within yeah. the right. continental US. Yep. And, and, and the reason for, you know, for that is, and that's why the, the federal government's pushing a lot of uh, um, you know, state inspected lockers. They, they, you know, they've got some funding out there for them to expand to the CIS or federal program, so that in an epidemic that we've, like we, we've seen, um, more states are able to, you know, have meat shipped from exactly. small mom and pop locations. Exactly. So. Mm -hmm. so we, with the last couple of minutes we have, I just want to thank you so much for all of this information you shared with us. This is incredible. Thank you. Um, I'm curious. Do you have any last parting words? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, just excited to see what's in the future. Yeah, we're we're young enough. Yeah. We're we're excited. We're passionate about what we do. We enjoy what we do. It is hard work. We do get frustrated. We do work together as a husband and wife. But I feel that we've really grown from where we were in 2009 to where we are now. I mean, I've never in a million years thought we could be able to purchase a roll stock machine or a poly clip machine. Never thought, hey, let's expand. We, you know, we were happy. We were comfortable where we are, even when we were custom. And now, 
we became official and now our next step is you know CISO yeah, you I have to grow it and I am proud of what we've done and I am thankful to our customers of being there supporting us you know we have older farmers and sometimes when we're not sure we would ask them hey what do you think and, and sometimes people don't like negative criticism but we do because from there we can grow we make mistakes we're human we'll forget a box of patties or we would you know a customer call in an order and something is written down wrong it's human error but instead of frowning upon that you know we try and move on get it better and our customer relation is the most important part for us is one on one with our farmers when they walk in that door I can say their name hey welcome and it's like they become friends and family because we see them on a yearly basis and we're in, you know we're not in competition with any lockers and we don't want to take any of their business but we want to grow and, and improve our product do you quality. ship any meat we we have tried that route um, with the humidity in Iowa. It's really hard, and insurance-wise, and people travel and they order stuff, and then stuff get there, and, and it just becomes an issue. It's just not a viable form of transporting frozen meat or fresh meat yes. right now. Yes, dry until, they, is until something comes, you know, that's that's cost-effective, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there will be something in the future. It's you know, it's just not yes. feasible right now. For for now, we I mean, feel in, that in the meat market's changing, yeah. you know, and people, the way people are buying meat is changing. Uh, people have realized, you know, they want to know where their meat comes from. Mm -hmm. And I think more and more people are starting to utilize small meat processing plants like ours um, because they want to know, you know, where their food's coming from, what they're eating, uh, how was it raised, how was it handled, and, uh, and, and that's important to them, what they're putting in their bodies. Well, now more so. than anything since COVID, I think people are more concerned about their health because it's not no longer wealth, it's their health. What, right. what am I putting in? How is it making my body feel? And with people, the shipping part, most people will buy a quarter of a beef or half a beef or a whole beef or a half hog. That is really hard to ship a whole carcass animal. Right. Um, so for now, we feel most of our customers are happy to drive. Um, you know, we have some people that drive six hours, some people that drive one hour, and they schedule that in their system to come and make arrangements and, and pick that up. So that's really convenient for us and for them. The, the shipping, we, we have, there's so many companies that do that for us to get into that market, maybe in the future. Sure. You know, like you said, if things get a little more cost effective, but just not right now. Well, with that, I want to thank you so much for this amazing tour and all of the information that you've willingly shared with us. Thank I also you. want to ask the viewers to please fill out an evaluation. We read each and every single one of them so we can make these the best possible for all of you. Thank you so much for viewing in. Also, go to the practicalfarmers.org website. You can find all kinds of other summer events, more live from the farm events. Next Tuesday, we'll be at Orchard Dial's Farm just south of here in Williams, Iowa. We're going to look at our 400 head U operation. And um, please uh, come to a field day this summer. We're starting field days back up in July. Um, I also want to thank the USDA Agriculture Marketing Service for helping sponsor and pay for this event. Um, and with that, thank you so much and so long from the butcher shop.